855 Eastern Time and Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. For the moment, the attention of Europe is again centered on the Balkans. The British government today broke off diplomatic relations with Romania on the ground that the Germans were using that country as a military base and building up there all the elements of an expeditionary force. However, it was said in London that this was only a polite warning and did not imply that Britain and Romania must go to war. In Berlin, it was argued that the British had taken this action because Premier Antonescu's firmness had prevented any further British espionage on the Germans in Romania, and it was insisted that Germany regards Britain itself as the principal objective and is not considering a war on two fronts. Meanwhile, the Bulgarian government denied Winston Churchill's statement in his speech yesterday that thousands of German troops have filtered into that country. But it was reported in Sofia, the Bulgarian capital, that Russia had told the Bulgarian government that it would keep hands off if the Germans wanted to pass through. This story, however, is still without confirmation. And the Italian radio came out today with a sharp warning to Yugoslavia not to abandon its neutrality. Rather surprisingly, for Yugoslavia had not otherwise appeared in recent speculation as to political shifts in the Balkans. In France and Switzerland, it is reported that the Spanish leader, General Franco, and his foreign minister, Serrano Sunier, are on their way by automobile to France, and most of the stories say they are going on to Italy by way of the French Riviera. Some reports, however, have it that Serrano Sunier, at least, is coming to Vichy, perhaps to try to arrange for joint French and Spanish action to relieve the food shortage which is acute in Spain and beginning to be serious in unoccupied France. Naturally, there are stories that the Spanish leaders are going to arrange for the use of Spanish air bases by the Axis, which may or may not be true, and in Vichy it is rumored also that they may offer to provide a haven in Spain or the Spanish islands for Italian troops evacuated from Africa. How the Italian troops would get there with the British Navy in the way is not explained. The French political situation, our correspondent Mr. Tarrant reports from Vichy, is still in a state of flux. But Marshal Pétain retains effective control in spite of the new honors given to Admiral Darlon. Today, Darlon was named as eventual successor to Pétain, and he now seems to hold all the offices that belonged to Pierre Laval before his overthrow on December 13th. How he will use them remains to be seen, but he could hardly have reached this position if his promotion had not been satisfactory to the Germans. The French and German automobile industries agreed today on what is called collaboration. Raw materials will be shared between them in what proportions is not explained, but the French industry will be limited to the manufacture of trucks and a considerable part of its output will go to Germany. There wasn't much fighting today. The Italians are still counterattacking in Albania, but the Greeks say they continue to throw them back. And in Libya, the British are mopping up after their recent victory at Benghazi. Fresh British forces have moved into Eritrea from the north, while the Italians say they threw back a British mechanized column in the Kufra oasis in southeastern Libya. Air action is again on a small scale. Though the moon is bright tonight over England, only a few planes have been seen. And while London had an alarm tonight, no raiders appeared. The British, however, made another series of heavy raids by daylight on Calais, Boulogne, and Dunkirk. This morning, German planes appeared over Iceland, now held by British and Canadian troops, and machine-gunned the airport near Reykjavik. But the principal purpose of the trip seems to have been to look the place over. Meanwhile, the Germans report successful attacks on convoys off Spain and Portugal. The Italians call yesterday's British raid on Genoa, which caused 300 casualties, deliberate aggression on an open city, though of course it had harbor fortifications, and they say the British came in under cover of a heavy mist. In Washington, the House of Representatives passed the bill lifting the debt limit to $65 billion, while the Senate Foreign Relations Committee was hearing more witnesses against the lease land bill. Marwin K. Hart, often accused of fascist sympathies, said the bill would get us into war and then the communists might take the country over. And Joseph Curran, often accused of communist sympathies, said the bill was distinctly fascistic. Tomorrow, Mayor LaGuardia of New York, President Conant of Harvard, and Wendell Wilkie will tell, testify for the bill, and afterward, Mr. Wilkie will see the president. And the Army denies Senator Wheeler's statement that it has ordered 1,500,000 coffins, saying that, as usual in peacetime, funerals are contracted for only when needed.
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>